saved him and cast him into the fire, and they are burned. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We pray that you will open our eyes, that we can see, and our ears, that we can hear, and our heart, that we can understand what the word of God is saying to us, and that you'll allow us to apply it to our lives so that we can be changed into the image of your dear Son. Now, God, we ask that Jesus would speak out of the Godhead and the Holy Ghost would reveal. And as the Holy Ghost reveals, may we receive it and release it to your people. We will give you glory for all of the revelatory knowledge and understanding of which you give us. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our high priest, and our man in the Godhead. Amen and amen, and you may be seated. Now, in John 13, 1, Jesus said, The hour has come. Then in John 14, He begins to preach or teach the messages that He had to have His children know prior to Him going to the cross. He said to them, I can't tell you everything right now. And there was a reason for that. But he said, I can't tell you everything right this minute. But he did tell them a whole lot. Leading up to this message that Jesus is giving them, he identified himself on six earlier occasions, this being the seventh, as I am the, I am the, to describe how he would express himself to mankind. Jesus speaking to the apostles, Jesus speaking in the various scriptures, identifies himself as, I am the bread of life. He said, I am the light of the world. I am the gate of the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am now the true vine. These are all interesting because they are showing you how he is actually the favor of God, the grace of God. He is the grace of God that gives you the nurturing on the inner man that is your life. He is the grace of God that has become the light that brought you out of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. He is the one, now look at this, the gate. Well, what was the gate for the sheep? It was grace. Grace was the gate. Jesus was the grace of God exposed to mankind. I am the gate. He says, I am the resurrection. I have been brought from the dead for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring you life. I am the only way. I am the only truth. I am the only life. Then he says, now if you understand one through six, then you will understand my illustration of I am the true vine. I'm the means whereby man will come to know God. I, Jesus would say, am the source that will allow you to tap in to that God. Now in Exodus chapter 3, Moses said to God, he said, what am I supposed to tell the people? 
What is it that you want me to tell them? If I had they ask me who you are, what should I tell them? He said, Moses, tell them that I am that I am. Then he went on to describe that to him. He said, you tell them that I am the God, that God of Abraham, that God of Isaac, that God of Jacob. And you tell them that that God is going to deliver you out of Egypt. And when you go and tell them this, you're going to proceed to Pharaoh. You're going to ask Pharaoh for a three-day pass. And Pharaoh, now watch this now. And Pharaoh is not going to give you a three-day pass. And I will strike plagues upon Egypt until Pharaoh lets you go. Isn't it amazing to me, to you, that God told Moses to go ask for a three-day pass? Let us go worship for three days. And then along came, I am the. I'm not that, but I am the. You're going to kill me because Jesus is about talking about this process right here in John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. You're going to kill me, but I am the. What does he call himself? He says, I am the resurrection of whom it's going to take a three-day pass. When I get done with my three-day pass, the world is going to be totally changed. Everything that you know about this world is going to be totally changed because I am the is going to bring about a resurrection that is going to bring life and going to strike a plague upon the earth. What will that plague be? That plague will be that man will be left to deal with his sin and to deal with death. And the I am the is going to be a vine that will be a source that will strengthen every individual who will believe on what he has done and will bring them out of death into a new life. And in that new life, you will be reconnected to God. You will see me now as the bread of life. You will see me now as the light out of darkness. You will see me now as the grace, the great gift of God that is given to mankind and that from me there will be a door open to you. What will that door do? The veil will be broken from top to bottom. It will fall open and you will have access into the throne room of God of which you have never had before because I am the grace way. Jesus said, every sheep that comes must come by me. I am the, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the good shepherd who is by my ministry bringing you into grace and truth, and thereby you will know that God through me. Now think about that. You will know that God through me. It will not be the God that covenanted with Adam, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It will be a God that covenants through me. 
It will be a God that cuts a new means, a new method, a new model, a new law that gives you a new legal document, the New Testament cut in my blood that will be the constitution of heaven. And from that constitution, you will be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You will become priest and I will become your Lord. And from the God Godhead, I will speak in the Holy Spirit, and you will be ministered to and changed, led, guided, and directed, and given words. When you're wrong, you'll be reproved. You'll be brought into the gate by the shepherd who will lead you where? To the Father. He will lead you to life because the only life that you can ever have is through me. I am the, think it through. He didn't say I am that God, although he was going to be back in that Godhead. He could have made that comment. He could have said I am that God because he told them in John chapter 8. He said, before Abraham was, I am. So in the spirit world, he could have said, you know, really and truthfully, I'm that God. But because he took on the form of man, because he thought himself not wrong to be equal with God, but left all of that to come in the fashion of man, walked among mankind, lived among mankind, he said there is a God that is that God. How do we know that now? Because Paul told us in Colossians chapter 2 that he is the man in the Godhead bodily and you are complete in him. So he could have alluded to being that God, but in the economy of God, he was man. And he was going to be the legal sacrifice that would bring man back into cooperation, bring man back into life in the image of God. So here he is. I am the vine. I'm the source from which you will know him. Now watch what he said. And we got to get this today. This is a missed message in our world. He didn't say that the branch is at the center. He didn't say that the fruit the branch grows is what this thing is all about, did he? In other words, he didn't say you're at the center of this thing. He didn't say that you, mankind, is at the center of it, did he? If he did, he would have said the fruit is the source. That would be backwards, wouldn't it? Because we can't have fruit without having a vine to grow it from. But we messed that all up. And we wanted to make ourselves the center of God's universe. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 2 or 1, What is man that you're even mindful of him? Why are you worried about man? The reality is we've gotten it backwards and we have become the center of God's universe. We're not the center of God's universe. Jesus is telling us this in John 15. He's saying, I as the vine am the center of God's universe. Everything that I do is coming from the center of God's universe. If you are going to be, have life, you're going to have to have it from me. You're not going to get it any other way. Then when you get life, you're going to become a witness unto me. Everything that you're going to do is going to be done in me. It is about Jesus Christ in the economy of God. What do they do in heaven concerning Jesus Christ? They bow and sing what? Worthy is the Lamb. See there? They don't sit and say, Worthy is Mike Springston, who Jesus brought with him. They don't say that. 
they bow and sing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. This universe, this world, is not about us. Now, we have been taught that this world, this, this church business, this religion business is all about us. The Word of Faith movement would tell you the, that you're at the center of everything and you can believe anything. You can command God. Huh? It ain't about me. It's about Jesus Christ. It isn't about what I want. It's about Jesus Christ. Someone said, but don't you believe God does anything for you? Well, yes, I believe God does something for me. How does he do it? By Jesus Christ. If I need healing, he did it by Jesus Christ. If I need finances, he does it by Jesus Christ. Whatever comes my way comes to me because I am in him and he is in me. Not because I'm in charge of my spiritual universe. We got it backwards. Jesus is telling us in John 15, wherever you go in the spiritual world, you will only go because the vine is taking you there. You will only develop because the vine is taking you there. How do we know this? Because Paul turned around and told us in Galatians chapter 5 that the vine develops something in us. What is it developing, Pastor? The fruit of the Spirit. It was not something I chose to do. Let me tell you something, friend. There once was a day when I could cuss with the best of them. And I have to tell you that swearing tickled my ears. It made me feel powerful to be able to say swear words. People would stand back. People would laugh. I've been to clinics where guys would get up in football clinics and they would start cursing. And everybody in the room would bust out laughing. What did he do? He cursed more because it gave him power. But whenever I came into Christ, something changed on the inside of me. It wasn't my nature. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. It was being in him. And him developing in me until I began to change the fruit that was coming out of me. Why? Because the vine, the source, was working in me. And when the source came out of me, guess what happened? I took on another DNA. I took on another method of, of, of blood flow, another method of blood type, a new DNA. My strands begin to change, and I begin to look to God and say, Lord, how should I be acting if I am in you and you are in me? Not God, I want you to change because of me. I want you to do this, that, or the other because I got saved. That's what the world will tell you. The world will tell you God loves you too much, send you to hell. We've been through this over and over and over. You are not the center. You are in Christ Jesus. He is the center of the spiritual universe. He is Lord. He is over everything that has a name. He is the source. And you must be the growth that comes from the source. If you're not, you will never be nurtured by the bread of life. You will never understand the light that changes you out of darkness. You will never understand that he is the grace mechanism of God given to mankind so that you could grow and develop. Not Now watch, watch, watch. Not to be furthered in your own image but to grow into the image of his dear son. Why would the word of God say such a thing? 
Why is it important that you understand that when Jesus said, I am the vine, he is saying to you, I am the mechanism of which you must come through in order to develop me in you and in order to develop and get yourself to that God. If you don't use it, if you don't come through it, if you get it misconstrued, if you misunderstand it, if you misrepresent it, if you misinterpret it, and you become the center of the world, what happens? One day Jesus looks at you and says, Who are you? I don't know you. Why? Because you never came through the vine. You never came through the gate. You never came through the source. He is the favor of God. He is the favor of God. Now let me say this to you so we can lay all this mess. Grace is not given for your personal pleasure. Grace is not given for you to trod on the work of the Son of God any way you want to. I had a man one time tell me that he could live like he wanted to because he had been saved. And grace was his hall pass to sin. Grace is not for your personal convenience. So you can live like the world, think like the world, act like the world, talk like the world, and then say to everybody, oh, I'm, I'm an evangelical Christian. Grace is Jesus Christ. Grace is Jesus Christ. He is the favor of God given to man. You cannot find where grace, when construed and interpreted correctly, is anything else. It is only Jesus Christ. John told us so in John 1, 13 or 14. He is the grace of, he is the favor of God to mankind. What is your role in grace? To believe. Why is grace important? It is the source. What is the source of? The gate. What does the gate bring? Light. What happened when you got into light? You're resurrected. What happened then? You're brought into life. What comes from that? You're walking away. What happens after you get in the way? Well, you find truth. Then what happens? More life. The vine is your source, my friend. The vine is the reason. The vine is the mechanism that God has produced, and it is called grace. Grace, grace, grace. The Rubble said that he would raise up the cornerstone in Zechariah chapter 4, and the cornerstone would cry, who is the cornerstone? Jesus Christ. What would he cry? Grace! Grace unto it. He would look at the world and say, I am grace. I am the favor of God. Get in me. Walk in me. Talk in me. I will show you that God. You'll never see that God unless you understand how to live in the vine. What happens if you get, try to get in the vine and you don't develop the vine appropriately. You become a branch that is unusable. You become a diseased branch. You become a branch that causes the health and life of the other branch and the fruit the branches are growing. You become a branch that causes them to be unnurtured, unhealthy, and die just like you. That's why we live in a world today where we're trying everything we can do to bring in sinners and, and we put sinners in operation in the church. Not biblical, not scriptural, and not true. Sinners that come in and get saved, yes, bless God. They should have a place in the house of God. But when we engraft unhealthy, diseased branches in the house of God, 
What happens? Everybody becomes unhealthy. Everybody gathers up on the disease. Let me prove it to you now. When your children were young, they would come to you and there would be something going on that you didn't want them to do because you saw it as being bad. That's not what you want your kids involved with. And you would say to them, no, I don't think I'm going to let you go to that. The first thing out of their mouth they would say, well, Billy's mama's letting him go. I don't understand why if Billy's mama says it's okay, that you say it's not okay. I don't understand why you are that person that won't let me go and do what my friends are doing. Their friends, their mamas, their daddies think it's okay, but you, ha, I hate you. I wish you weren't my mama. I wish you weren't my daddy. Well, why would you say such a thing? Because you won't let me do what I want to do. You don't have to raise your hand. You're one of two people. Let me tell you who you are. You're the one that did it, or you're the one that had it done too. That's who you are. You're one of two folks. Now, how did that happen? Where did that conversation come from? Let me tell you where it came from. It came from the infection of interaction. You see it? It came from the infection of interaction. So when we interact with an infection, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get sick. We're going to get sick. And the next thing you know, our infection of interaction leads us to be diseased because we look around and say, well, now if, 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 if so-and-so's teaching Sunday school and they are the town drunk, if so-and-so is representing the church at the church door, and I just saw them over at the bar last night stumbling out, well then, is it okay for me to be a drunk? Does the church take on drunkenness? Huh. See how the disease of interaction begins? The disease, someone would say, now, Pastor, you don't sound too loving to the lost. Let me tell you what I have for the lost. May I tell you real quick that I'm about to be done. Let me tell you what I have for the lost. It's called grace. It's called Jesus Christ. It's called being plugged into the vine. It's called being given the favor that God gave in Jesus Christ. God did not give his love, except he gave his love in the favor of Jesus Christ. He loved us and favored us in Jesus Christ. And I will give you grace, and I will love you in grace, and I will share with you in grace, and I will help you get your life together by grace, and I will teach you faith. But I will not allow you to infect by interacting with God's people. Why? Because the Bible is clear. If the interaction is infectious, it is diseased, it must be cast out. It must be taken off. Because if it's not taken off, friend, guess what it does? Makes everybody sick. Yeah. Makes everybody sick. Jesus said, I am the. I am the. So that tells me when he talks about bread, that he is the perfect nourishment. There is no other nourishment required. There is no other way. There is no other nourishment required. Then he says, I am the light. That tells me that darkness cannot remain. Where Jesus is, there cannot be darkness. Then he tells me, I am the grace gate. Then he tells me, I am not only the grace gate, but I am by grace. Now watch it now. I am by grace going to take care of my sheep. Because I am the vine, 
I'm going to give you everything that that God has. I'm going to share with you everything that that God possesses. I am the, not that. I will become that. But I am not that. I am the. And because I am the, I'm going to give you. I'm going to take care of you. You're going to be in me. You're going to live in me. You're going to talk in me. And whenever there is an infection, an attraction, an interaction that is disease, if you will just listen to the gate, to grace, he'll take that thing and move it away from you. All too frequently, though, we want to go along with it. We say, well, we don't see any harm in it. We don't see any problem with it. How's that going to hurt us? If it adds whatever to our church, here's the big one. If they're giving money, bless God, we want them. What a sad commentary. Jesus said, if you'll come by the vine, the vine will be your grace. That grace will give you the resurrection power of anointing over death and hell. That grace will be your path. That grace, the vine, will be your source. Ultimately, the true vine, the true vine is going to lead you to that God. It is that God of whom we seek. It is that God of whom we seek. It is that covenant of whom we want to live in. It's that, that. We cannot get there coming in any other way other than through the source, through the vine. The vine, Jesus taught it seven different times. I am the, I am the mechanism, I am the means, I am the way, I am the grace. If you'll just eat of me, eat of my body and eat of my flesh, I'll be the way to that God. If you will just follow in my light, I'll be the way to that God. If you will just come through my grace, I'll be the way to that God. If you will just let me by grace work with you and put your faith in me, as Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I will take care of you. I'll be your resurrection and life because I am the vine. Bow your head and close your eyes. Father, I thank you for the word of God today. We make no mistake today about who you are. So we plug ourselves into the vine today. It is in the vine that our source, that our path to that God is unveiled. It is in the vine that our mechanism to know that God is given. We want no infection. We want no disease. We want you to be the good shepherd of grace. Keep us, Father. Keep our hearts and keep our minds. Keep our thoughts by grace until we can live in the power of your resurrection. Walk the way, the truth, and the life. Be in the vine in all that we do and all that we are. Now, if you want the vine to be your source and there's any creeping infection in your life, then right where you pray, I want you to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of this. Forgive me of this. Forgive me of this. I want to be in the vine. I want the vine to be my source. I want the vine to flow to me so that I am healthy. Feed me so that I am well. Bring the light of the Son of God to me so that there is no darkness. Be grace for me, God, as I put my faith in Jesus Christ. 
resurrect my inner man until I'm full of life. You know where life is, God, there is nothing but dark, nothing but light. There is no darkness. Then let me walk, Father, following the way, the truth, and the life. And then let me continue to be attached to the vine so that I can grow and become the image of your dear son. Now, if that's your prayer, I want you just to stand, lift your hands, and say, Father, we receive it today. We receive it today by the grace of God. We take it. It belongs to us. This whole vine. I see the vine. I see the vine. May the vine be in me. May the vine grow me. May the vine direct me. May the vine feed me. May the vine give me light. May the vine be my entrance into grace. May the vine keep me. May the vine resurrect me and give me life. May the vine be my way, my truth, my life. May I remain in truth because I remain in the vine. Thank you, Jesus, for the vine. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Those of you that are listening by Facebook, podcast, wherever, attach yourself to the vine. The first step is be saved. Come into the light of His love and be saved. Then we will teach you how to grow and develop in the vine. Won't you pray the prayer today? Father, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I repent. I've been infected by sin and disease. I want to be free. So today I take the bread of life and I eat of it. And I take the light that is Jesus Christ. And I allow that light to shine on me and darkness flees. I accept Christ as my Savior. I make Him my Lord. Amen and amen. If you did that, get yourself in church. Continue to follow us in podcast, Facebook, wherever you can find the teaching of God's Word. We'd love to have you as a part of our media ministry. But most of all, my friend, attach yourself to the vine. And let the vine begin to develop in you the image of His dear Son. May God bless you is my prayer. May He keep you. We'll be back at 6 o'clock tonight and 6.45 on Wednesday night. Hope to see you all. May peace abound. May strength be in every inch of everything you do. May courage and encouragement walk with you every day as you walk with Jesus. God bless you. Amen.